In this tutorial we're going to examine linear gradients within Inkscape 0.46. Gradients are often used to create highlights or shadows which in turn are used to suggest three dimensions or depth. And they're relatively easy to use once you become familiar with them but initially they can be rather confusing. So in this case I'm just going to start with a red rectangle. Now the easiest way to create a gradient is to use this tool on the toolbar. And we simply click and drag across and we see that the default in Inkscape is for the gradient to go from full color of the original color of the object to total transparency. And we have two handles. We can drag this handle back if we want that transparency to take effect earlier on and we can drag this handle in if we want the red to travel across our shape longer before it begins to fade out. These handles can also be used to shift the direction of our gradient so we can move it onto a diagonal or we can go and change it to a vertical gradient. Or in fact we can reverse the gradient entirely by switching the original direction of these two handles. So that's the simplest way to create a gradient but sometimes we want more complete control over the gradient and to do that we usually need the fill and stroke dialog box to come up. So I'm just going to return my gradient to its original form and We'll bring up the fill and stroke dialog box, which you can do either by clicking on this button or by going Control Shift F. So I'm going to enter my linear gradient screen here. Now we can see that we are working with something called linear gradient 3880. And this is probably one of the most off-putting things about gradients in Inkscape, is that they're assigned these random numbers which have no particular meaning. Unfortunately, we can't edit the gradient name. We have to put up with that randomly assigned gradient number. But nevertheless, that is our gradient. We only have one gradient in our object, or in our drawing rather. When we try to drop that down, we don't see any others. If we had several gradients going, we would see more gradients there. So I'm going to click on Edit, and that brings up this dialog box. Within the gradient editor, we can see that the gradients are defined by stops. The first stop, again assigned a random number, is called stop 3882. And if you look, that's full red, no transparency, that's represented by this square. We have another stop called 3884, and that is represented on our drawing by this circle. And you can see that it's full red but at full transparency. That's what's represented by the left hand here of our representation. So another way that we could actually reverse this is to take our alpha channel, which is our transparency or, or our opacity, depending on how, which way you want to look at it. We could drag that up. That would change that stop to full red we could come here and drag the alpha channel the other direction and that would change that stop to being the transparent one. So we can edit things in that manner. Let's say that we didn't want this to be red fading to transparent. We wanted it to be red fading to black. Well then we could enter our CMYK definition. We can drag our black slider all the way to the right and our transparency slider all the way to the right and we would then have a gradient that went from red to black. I'm just going to undo that. Another thing that we can do is we can add stops. So right now our gradient is defined by two stops, a start point and an end point. But if we click on add stop we'll notice that we get another edit point right here and that edit point, according to our little diagram here called 3888, 
is red at partial transparency. So now let's suppose that we wanted to create a gradient that went sort of along the pattern of the rainbow. We'll add another stop. We'll move these stops sort of equidistant here. So now we see we have one there and it's at 0.32 and that was changed when I slid this slider along. Now let's go to this stop, that'll be this one here, and let's go to our color wheel and let's pick a shade of purple for that and let's go to our next stop and let's pick a shade of blue for that and go to our final stop and go a little further down the blue spectrum. So now we've kind of created a spectrum distribution there by controlling those stops. Again we can slide these along we see that red comes further down our continuum, slide it back, we push red back. And those are the basic methods we use to control linear gradients.